Hello DIYers, Dawn here with a DIY workshop in a box. Today we are going to demonstrate the eight inch square. Before we get started, I'm gonna do a little bit of maintenance. All of our stains and paints are water-based, but if it gets on your clothes and dries, it's not gonna come out. So it's like painting your house. So we recommend wearing an apron or some old clothes. In the event you do get some on you, just wash it off right away while it's still wet and you should be fine. Okay, so are we ready to get started? Okay, so we're gonna start by staining the wood. We'll just set our stencil aside for right now. And we're gonna grab our stain. In case you forgot what color stain you chose, I marked it with an S. Just kind of uh, mix it a little bit with your fingers just in case it separated a little bit during shipment. And then um, we're just gonna put it in the little cup provided. So just tear open a little bit and then squeeze it in. Oh, well, okay, we better hurry up. So gloves were provided in your kit. You wanna wear, we recommend wearing gloves because it will get stain your fingers and your nails. I don't like to wear it, so um, I'm not going to. So anyway, you take the yellow sponge and you give it a little bit of a squeeze. This is just mainly to get it to fit in the cup. Get some stain on your sponge. And you're gonna wanna apply edge to edge. You don't wanna go halfway because then a line will form. So edge to edge. Just really spread that out. You wanna go along the grain of the wood, so basically following the lines in the wood. As you can see, I'm doing a nice thin layer. I'm not, um, have a, a thick layer, but I've taken that thin layer and really spreading it out before I go and get more stain on my sponge. So edge to edge, maybe turn the wood a little bit, go back over it. Nice, thin layer. And of course you wanna make sure you do the edges. The edges gives it a more finished look. The back is optional, depending on where you plan on putting it. If you're gonna hang it on the wall, you're really not gonna see the back. But if you wanna do the back, then of course you can. So as you do the edges, you might see some of the stain coming up. So I just kinda work that in so you don't have a noticeable edge. Now, if you do a nice thin coat like this, it's gonna dry pretty quickly. So I can go ahead and turn it over and do the back if I want to. Okay. So the lighter layer you do, the more the wood grain's gonna show through, and of course the lighter the stain's gonna be. Now, if you want your stain to be a darker color, then you just let it dry a little bit and once it's dry, then go ahead and apply your second coat to get the darker color if you want it darker or if you want less of the wood grain. I personally like the look of the... Okay, now that your wood is completely dry, we're ready to apply our stencil. Ahead of time, I went ahead and squeegeed it for you in the event you didn't have a squeegee on hand. I had a little bit of stain on my squeegee, uh, but that's okay, it's not gonna work, affect anything. So. Before you apply your stencil, you kind of want to line it up to get an um, idea of where you want it. The blue square, is a, it is a perfect square, so that'll help you with your alignment. But in the event you have a, a wood knot or something that you, on your wood, you kind of want to avoid that on your design if at all possible. So here, the woods, the knot's right here. That's going to go right on my word. Um, like I said, I want to avoid that. So I'm going to give my wood a little turn and line that up. Now my knot's right here and that'll avoid the letters. So now that I know about where I want to place my stencil, you're just going to turn it over so that the grid side is facing up and you're gonna separate the grid from the blue. So not from the white piece that, that was just squeegeed. So separate the grid from the blue. And you're just gonna roll it back. You wanna keep it nice and flat. You don't wanna pull up because you could pull up the stencil. So just keep it nice and flat, roll it back. Now in the event some of the blue comes up on this white, you're gonna to wanna to roll it back and press down and then go again. So you wanna pay particular attention to the inside of your loops, your E's, A's, anything like that. So now that we have this all off, we're gonna set this aside because we are gonna reuse it. So now this is really sticky and you're just gonna kinda of put fingers on either side to flip it over. 
and then again, you're, I just like to hover it over the top using those the blue perfect square as a guide. And then once I'm happy with the placement, I just set it down gently Then start in the center and press out. This is so if you have any air bubbles, you're pushing them out and away from your design. So just kind of rub over it a few times with your hands to make sure it's stuck down really well to the wood. And now we're going to peel up this white layer. Let's just get the corner started. Again, just kind of roll it back. And again, you don't want any blue to come up. All the blue from this point on should be stuck to the wood. Now this is trash, so you can go ahead and throw it away. So before we go on to painting, we wanna do a very important step, and that is to take your finger and trace over the entire design. Basically, you're just pressing down on your design to make sure it's stuck really well to the wood. So then when we get ready to paint, it doesn't bleed underneath, because we don't want any bleeding on our project. So this does take a, a few extra seconds or maybe a minute or so to do this, but it, it's very important and you'll be much happier with your final results. So just keep going over that entire design. Use your finger or your thumb, whatever you feel more comfortable with. Trace over that entire design. And now we're ready to paint. So I like to take the the, the backing of the stencil that we just used and just kind of tuck it under my project because like I said we're going to use this now as a palette. Use the shiny side up. Now we're going to grab our paint and again maybe just massage it a little bit to make sure it's mixed really well in case it's separated. And then just tear off a little corner. You don't want a lot. Just take out a little bit and we're going to squeeze it out onto our little palette. Just a little bit on the corner because in the event that we don't use the rest of this paint it will dry up on its own provide providing its own seal, and then you can save it for another project. Okay, so to apply the paint, we're gonna use the, the small makeup sponges included in your kit, and you're just gonna dab it into your, your paint. As you can see, there's a lot of paint on here. We don't want a lot of paint, so we're just going to dab off the excess to where it looks like there's barely any paint at all. And then we're gonna go to our project, and we're just gonna dab or tap straight up and down. You don't want to brush because then you can push the paint underneath the stencil. And of course, we don't want to do that because again, we're trying to avoid the bleeding. So you're just going to get a nice light layer. When you need more paint, you go back to your palette and pick up more paint and then back to your design and back to dabbing. Remember, straight up and down. Now, as you can see, this light coat looks a little bit blotchy. We can still see some of that wood coming through, which is perfectly fine because that means you're doing a nice light layer. And that's what we want to do, light layers. Once we get the entire first coat down, we're going to go back and do a second coat. And then when we do that second coat, it's all going to fill in and look the way you desire. Get a little more paint, dab it off. So doing nice light coats and then building up as you, if you want it to be dark, more paint to fill in. This will keep it, again, like I said, from bleeding. But also whenever you work with this paint and you build up the layers, it's going to just, the, build, the layers will build up to the point where it starts to get a little rubbery. So when you peel off the stencil, it could potentially peel some of the paint off with it. So you want nice light coats. Now, typically by the time you finish your entire design, it'll be dry enough for you to do that second coat. Now for me, I'm right-handed, so I like to start at the top and the left and work my way top to bottom, left to right. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my second coat. Again, dabbing off. And as you can see, it's really starting to fill in now.
in the event you feel like you got a little too much paint, and just keep working it and go back to it and pick it up. Okay. Now typically two coats is enough. If you're using black paint, the black paint is a, a thinner paint for some reason and you will we'll more than likely need three coats of the black. I just like to go over it again a little bit, not necessarily picking up more paint, but just going over it to make sure I have a nice consistent coat of paint. So then I just set it, the makeup sponge back down and let it dry a little bit. You could use a hair dryer if you want. I prefer not to, it doesn't take that long to air dry, so I'm just gonna let it air dry for a little bit. And then I like to look at it, sometimes I will tilt it to get a better angle. And that way I can see if I see any more of the wood coming through. So like right here, I see some brown still, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more there. As you can see, there's a, I still have a lot of paint left and I am pretty much done with my project as well as a lot of paint still left in my packet. So, I mean, you can't really save that, but the packet here, go ahead and save it. Like I said, just let that the paint dry there and it'll create its own little seal. Wash out your sponge and then you can reuse the paint later or on another project. So right now, I am done with the painting and we're just gonna wait for it to dry a little bit. And it's pretty, it's dry enough, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel. So you just find a spot on your wood that it's already hanging over a little bit. And then you're just going to peel it off. So this stencil is trash, We're not. it's not reusable. So if it tears, it's okay. We're gonna go, go back and pick up any pieces that we didn't get the first time around. Now for these inside pieces, you should have some toothpicks in your kit. And this is what we use to get the smaller pieces out. And this is, we call it weeding, because you're basically just weeding out the bad stuff. And if your toothpick breaks, just turn it over and use the other side. I like to go at an angle. There we go. And you just kind of get a little bit, just enough to pop it up to where you can finish off with your fingers, maybe use it to help you, and then get up the rest. Now, if you want, you might want to move your palette out of the way so you don't accidentally get your project in paint. Like I said before, it's okay if it, if it rips, but if you can get it as much up in one pool as possible, then that just gives you less to have to go back and weed out. All right, so now we're just down to the inside of our letters. And I like to go at an angle and just kind of push it along. You do want to kind of be careful because you don't want to poke the wood and mar it. So that's why I go more at an angle and more at pushing the actual stencil. At first, you'll see that you're probably scraping up some of the paint, which is fine because that's on the stencil itself, so you're not doing anything to the wood. I got a bad toothpick, so I'm just going to get out another one. That in there. Also, if you have some other uh, tools, if you have a weeding tool already or something um, else that has like a sharper point or something that you would prefer to use like this, then um, you can do that as well. 
The downside with using sharper pieces or instruments is that it, it is a lot easier to mar the wood. And there we go. And now we have our finished square. So I hope you enjoyed uh, creating this. Um, in the event, if you need to do any touch-ups, maybe right here there's a little bit, or just a little bit where it did overlap onto this knot. It did kind of bleed over a little bit there. I mean, I'm not really too worried about that, but if you are, you can take your toothpick I like to use the toothpicks because it has a really sharp point and it gives you a lot more control than a paintbrush. So just dip it into your stain and then just cover it up a little bit and then you're good to go. So I hope you enjoyed your project. I would love to see a photo of your finished one. Just give me an email and I will see you with our next project. Thanks for joining me.